Shalom and welcome to each and every one of you. I'm sure as you are seeking God, the Lord is surely looking after you, caring for you. As scripture says, he surely cares for you. If he looks after the lilies of the field and the birds of the air, you are counted much more precious than that. So stay assured, confident, knowing he cares for you. No matter what the storms you may be facing, the fact always remains, he cares for you. Hallelujah. You know, one of the words that we always keep hearing is trust. Trust in God. Trust in God. Trust that God will do it for you. You know, when we, whenever we use the word trust in regards to man, many a times we get disappointed, right? Sometimes the employee that we trusted so much, we begin to realize how he has cheated us. Or maybe the wife or the husband in some marriages, you trust one another so much and gradually you realize that one was unfaithful. Maybe the friend that you so uh, you know, loved, so cared for, so uh, uh, yielded to, trusted so much, just broke that trust by cheating on you. When we come to man, yes, man surely does fail that word trust. But when it comes to God, let's look what God says. One of the things that you and I need to understand is God is faithful and he will never, never forsake his own. One of the things you can do surely, you know, with great confidence is put your trust in God. When we read in, in, the, word, in the word of God, the word trust comes from the word kausho, which means to flee from protection or to confide in or have hope or make refuge. That means when we are in crisis, the, the trust that we have put in God, we know that we can run to God and we will be protected. When we look at the word trust, it means to confide in. That means we, we, have, the, we have the freedom to open up our hearts to God, knowing that He will keep it a secret, not just there. He will try to act on it or He will act on it. We also know that the word trust means to have hope. That means when we put our trust in God, we hope in God. We look forward to what God will be doing. It's a positive assurance knowing that God will surely work on your behalf. When we look at the word trust, again, it says to make God our refuge. That means we hide in Him. And one of the things when you, when you actually equate this to man, we will see when we run to man for protection, man at times fails us. When we run to man to confide in, to tell our secrets, to tell our problems, sometimes they leak it out to others, right? When we run to man and we put our hope in man, many are disappointed. Sometimes we put our hope in man and run to man to take refuge, to seek protection, to seek cover. Sometimes we feel disappointed, right? But not with God. He is our hope. He is our refuge. He is our protection. He's the one that we can look to and confide, open up our hearts to and know for sure that He will act on it. He will work on our behalf. And we open to Psalms chapter 25 and we read what the psalmist says in verse 2. He says, Oh my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let me not be put to shame. I trust you, God. I trust you, God, the psalmist is declaring. He says there, uh, let not my enemies exult over me. Let them not conquer over me. Let them not rule over me. Let them not rise up above me. You see, the psalmist here, David, is declaring, I put my trust in you. Now you don't put me to shame. I believe that's exactly what we need to be. People that put our trust in God and know that God will surely not put you to shame. And we read into scripture, we begin to see the word trust constantly being used. We see in the, in the, in the book of Isaiah chapter 12, Isaiah chapter 12, we see what... He says that the prophet says that in chapter 12 verse 2 he says behold God is my salvation I will trust and I will not be afraid 
I will trust. God is my salvation. Not God was my salvation. He is my salvation. He is forever. He is the ever-present help for us. He is my salvation. The word salvation, as we all know, speaks about sozo, which speaks about healing, blessings, deliverance. We need to understand that. Here, here the prophet is saying, God is my salvation. I will put my trust in him and I will not be afraid. In these times that we are living in, it's so important to put our trust in God. It's so important to know that God will care for us, to have the assurance in God. Then we look at the secular meaning of the word trust. Okay, It means it's a firm belief. Let me say that again. It's a firm belief in biblical terms. We would say it's a deep conviction in the reliability, truth and ability of someone. Come on. It's a firm belief. In the reliability, truth, and ability of God. We know that our God is reliable. We know that our God is truth. We know that our God is fully able. No matter what you are going through, put your trust in God. Know that He is reliable and He will not fail you. Know that He is truth. That means when He promises something, He will not fail you. When we go into Genesis chapter 28, verse 15, we see God making a promise there in Genesis chapter 28, verse 15. It says, God speaks to Jacob here in verse 15. He says, Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. And we look into the life of Jacob. Yeah, God did fulfill his promises. God did keep his word. Yeah, God is telling him, you can trust me, Jacob. I am with you. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. I want to speak that over you right now. That God is saying that he will not leave you until he has done what he has promised over your life. Jacob had his shortcomings, Jacob had his failures, Jacob had his struggles, but yet we know that God, irrespective of what Jacob was, because Jacob's heart was on God, because Jacob acknowledged God, we see God fulfilling the promises over Jacob. Because of Abraham, Jacob's father's father, we see what happens there. God fulfills the promise. What he spoke to Abraham, what he spoke to Isaac, he spoke over Jacob and he brought it to pass. I'm speaking it over you right now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus, in Jesus, God will not leave you till he has done what he has promised. God will not leave you. He will not leave you with an incomplete promise with an incomplete word, with an unfinished word. Put your trust in God. Put your trust in God. Know that He is reliable. Rest on Him. Rest on Him. Lean on Him. He will not disappoint you. And we look into scripture in Mark chapter 5 verse 36. We see the story of Jairus there in, in Mark chapter 5 verse 36. We read the story of Jairus there. Everybody told Jairus, she is dead. She Everybody told Jairus. See, let's, let's read there from verse 35 onwards. It says, while he was still speaking, they came from the ruler's house, some who said, your daughter is dead. People came to Jairus and said, your daughter is dead. Jesus replies, in verse 36, but overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. In some of the versions it says, do not fear, only trust. Trust me, the daughter is dead. Jairus should have left Jesus at that very moment and ran home because he's lost the one he loves. He should have immediately gone to, to do the last whatever rites are there but he holds on to Jesus where Jesus says 
do not fear, only trust. I want to tell you, do not fear, only trust. Whatever it is God has spoken, he will bring it to pass. Jesus spoke to Jairus, spoke to the people around. She is not dead but sleeping. And what happened is Jesus rose or Jesus brought back Jairus' daughter from the dead. I want to tell you whatever your situation is, maybe it's finished. Maybe you see no hope. Maybe you feel it's lost. Maybe you feel that there is no future ahead, but I want to tell you, Jesus says, believe, trust, do not be afraid. And one more thing, as we said, one thing is he will fulfill his word. He will bring his word to pass. What he has promised, he will do it. Jairus he put his trust in Jesus. In fact, when you look at the way Jairus trusted Jesus, Jesus entered Jairus' house and put everybody out of that house. Everyone was out. Jairus did not say a word. He trusted in the ways of Jesus. You know, when you put your trust in Jesus, no matter what he asks of you, you are willing to do it. No matter what he does in your life, you are willing to yield to it because you know that he knows what is best for you. I want to ask you right now, do you trust Jesus? Do you trust in the process? The process may make no sense, but do you trust that the end result will be good? Maybe I'm speaking to somebody who's going through a valley right now, who's going through a difficult time. Do you trust Jesus in the process? Do you trust Jesus? in the process. Maybe you can't see the answer right now, but yet do you trust Jesus? Do you trust that he will finish what he has begun? If yes, I want you to right now make a confession. Make a declaration. Yes, I believe what he said, he will do it. He said it, he will do it. I, I, I will not be ruled by what I see. I will not be ruled by my feelings. I'm going to be ruled by his word. He said it, I believe it. He will do it. Look into the scriptures. We see God always, always fulfilling what he has spoken. Always. The same will be in your life. Trust God. The problem with us is many a times we are overwhelmed by the process. And because of the process, many of us move away from God. Feel disappointed in God. But let's look look into the life of, of all the amazing men and women of God. Look into the life of Joseph in the Old Testament. There was a process. Look into the life of Jacob. There was a process. Look into the life of Abraham. There was a process. Look into the life of Paul in the New Testament. There was a process. He went through different things in life. But the end result, God brought to pass all that he spoke over them. I want to speak it to you right now. Trust God. Maybe the times are hard now. Trust Him. Rest on Him. He will take you through this time and bring you out victorious. He will fulfill His word over your life. Maybe you cannot understand why, but the end result will truly be awesome. Awesome. Trust Him. Trust Him. Know that He is fully able fully able, that he's reliable. He will not just leave you midway. Look at Daniel. Daniel trusted his God. The king put Daniel into the lion's den. But Daniel trusted his God. And what happens next is God shuts the mouth of the lions. Can you believe that? God shut the mouth of those lions. Look at Daniel's three friends. They trusted God. They were put into the fire and the fire could not consume them. I want to tell you right now, if you, are, if you trust God, no matter what situation you are put into, no situation can overwhelm you. No situation can consume you. No lions, no beast can ever devour you. You will see the faithfulness of God. What you put, you, the trust that you have put in God, you will not be disappointed. Trust God. Yes, there is the process. 
Daniel did not escape the lion's den. The three friends of Daniel did not escape the fire. They went into the fire. Daniel went into the lion's den. They they've had to go through their process, but they came out bigger, stronger. Their trust in God, they were not put to shame. That's what the psalmist says. God, I put my trust in you. Don't let me be put to shame. Don't put me to shame. And you look into Mark chapter four, verse thirty-six. I believe that's the best example of trusting in God, trusting in the Father. In Mark chapter four, verse thirty-six, it says there, from thirty-six to forty, we see Jesus in the boat there. <clears throat> It says, on that day when evening had come, he said to them, "Let us go across to the other side." And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. Jesus was sleeping on a cushion in the storm. The Bible says water was entering the boat. Yet, yet Jesus was sleeping in that storm. The boat, I believe, was shaken. I believe the boat was tossing to and fro. I believe as the waters were gushing in, it was splashing all over. It must have even fallen on Jesus. Yet, in that shaking moments, Jesus could sleep. why he knew the ability of his father he knew what he could do he knew that god his father would never disappoint i want to tell you right now that's a best example of trust in your storm you just need to let go and let god in you let go and let god in that's all you need to do trust what god is doing in your life I want to challenge you. I want to encourage you right now. Trust what God is doing in your life. Trust him. Maybe you are right now diagnosed with sickness. Maybe you've got covid. Maybe you've got you've got cancer. Maybe you are going through chemotherapy right now. Maybe you are going through a time of of stress with your family. Maybe you're going through a time where there's no money in your hands. trust in the ability of god trust that he will make a way in your life jesus could rest in the storm would you rest in the storm would you rest in that calamity that crisis that you're right now facing and things are not going right with you right now would you still say i choose to rest in jesus if so I want you to confess it. I want you to make a declaration right now. I will rest in my storm. I will rest in my crisis. I will rest in this financial situation. I will rest in my sick times. I will rest in God, in God, in the ability of my God. What is your decision? We need to learn to just let go and let God in. Let go and let god in when you see john chapter 11 verse 41 we know the raising of lazarus from the dead we see what happens there in john 11 verse 41 onwards <clears throat> it says there so they took away the stone and jesus lifted up his eyes and said father i thank you that you have heard me what an assurance what a trust he tells them roll the stone over and then he says father i know that you always hear me that's what we need to carry with us knowing that when we have spoken to god it is a done thing it is a done thing you see when we pray we pray to build a relationship with god and when you make your prayers and petitions known to god he is heard it from that very moment he has heard it all you need to do now is trust in the process trust in what he is doing because at the end it will always turn out for your good it will always turn out for your good look at lazarus he was put into the tomb jesus 
goes to the tomb, rolls the tomb stone away. And what comes forth is Lazarus, as Jesus trusted in his father, who spoke to his father and said, you always hear me, just so that they all know it. Then we see a miracle. Come on, church, put your trust in God. Trust in his ability. Trust in the process. Trust in what he is going to do. That he's going to finish what he has begun. I'm speaking to somebody right now. You've got a nasal problem. You've got a problem with your nose. I see, I see there are times where uh, the, there's some kind of a bleeding that happens in your nose. I believe God is healing it right now. There's somebody having a middle backache. Your back in the middle is aching you. I believe God is healing it right now. There's someone else. I see, I see your shoulders. Your shoulders are not, you know, it's paining you and your movement is not happening freely. I believe God is healing you. There's somebody, you feel like something's caught you on the throat. I believe God is healing you. Come on, come on, people of God. There's somebody I see. <clears throat> it's been it's been maybe three years. I see the number three three years that you are that you have suffered. You've gone through a lot of crisis, a lot of pain, a lot of hurt, a lot of memories that that keep troubling you. I want to tell you: trust God. Let go. Let go. Let go of all the garbage, all the pain, all those memories. Put it in the hands of God. Trust God. He is working a good work in you. He's working a good work in you. Remember, no matter what people around you plan, the end God will always turn for good. Look at David. His father, Jesse, he was his favorite was everyone else but David. David was out in the fields when Samuel came to anoint and the other brothers of David were kept into the house. So Jesse ignored David, rejected David, but we see how God turned it all around. You see, God turned it around in favor of David. David was anointed king. I want to tell you, no matter what you are facing right now, don't, don't sit with it. Don't hold on to those emotional pains, those bitterness, that hurt. Trust God, let go. And I tell you, no matter what people are planning against you, God will turn it all around to lift you higher. He will lift you higher. I'm speaking to somebody there. God will lift you higher, higher, higher. There's also someone I see, you've, you've fought it out. You fought it out. There have been such times you fought it out. It's like you were, you were surrounded by thorns. You were surrounded by pain. You were surrounded by hopelessness. You were surrounded by, by, by death. You were surrounded by bad news. But you fought it all out. You fought it out. You struggled. But I want to tell you, God is bringing you out into open spaces, open territory, open spaces. It's just like God was showing Abraham, see what you want. Take this is your portion. I want to tell you, God is leading you into your portion. Hallelujah. God is leading you into your portion. I want to speak to you right now and say, God is leading you into your portion. Your portion. I see someone else. I see, I see there are steps that are being built. Steps that are being ordered for you. Steps. Don't look at what where you are now. As you keep your trust in God and keep moving forward, I see God organizing steps for you. He's setting things in order for you. There's somebody you are having an eye, eye, eye problem, some kind of an eye problem. I believe it's some kind of an infection. God is touching it right now. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. There's somebody by name of Frankie. I see you, I see you highly favored by the Lord. I see you being, being, being lifted up by the Lord. I see the hand of God over you. I see God saying, I will surround you and take you from where you are to where you need to be. I tell you the days that are coming are, are, are days where you are going to be amazed by the faithfulness of God. 
God will show himself strong. Everything around you, no matter what is being shaken, it's all so that you move to the direction that God has kept for you. It will all turn out for good. I give you praise, God. I give you praise. I give you praise. I want to speak to, I want to speak to those who are disappointed. I want to tell you that don't don't hold on to your disappointments. It's not going to last long. Whatever you were you were you were hoping for and has not happened, don't don't be disappointed. Keep hoping. Keep hoping in God because there are bigger things coming. There are bigger things coming. Bigger things coming. I want to speak to Faye and tell you bigger things coming. Keep your hope in God. Don't hold on to the 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 things that may have pulled you down. Don't hold on to the things that discouraged you. Keep your hope in God. There is bigger things coming. There's better things coming. There's, there's things that you can be assured that God will show his faithfulness over your life. I want to speak to Raymond, Raymond Richmond, some name like that. And I believe that that, that the turbulent times, turbulent times that you've been through is not going to pull you down you can rest assured that God will finish what he has begun. I want to speak to Maria and tell you, rest in the Lord. Trust his process. Trust his process. Don't hold on to anything else but the Lord. And you will see the process, the end will be awesome in your life. And hey, I want to speak to Coelho and tell you, Coelho, I think it's a surname, Coelho. I believe that God is God is blessing you, God is healing you, God is taking away all those hurtful memories and birthing something new within you. There are things that are going to happen in your life that are just going to refresh you. You are going to be refreshed in the Lord, refreshed in the Lord, because the Lord is going to show you His goodness now. Oh, I give you praise, God. I give you praise. I give you praise. Almeida, I want to tell you, the hand of the Lord is upon you, upon your household. And no matter what shaking it is, you are moving. You are moving in the Lord. As long as you are moving, no matter what you are facing, as long as you are moving, you are heading to where God wants you to be. Trust in the process. Trust God. Trust God. He is working a good work within you. He is working a good work within you. Oh, Ramashtan, Daraya, Maseki, Rore, Yalalai, Masai, Induro, Yalai. I believe there's somebody God is touching your stomach. Your stomach is always bloated. I see God healing you. There's somebody, your nerves, your nerves are paining you. Your nerves pain you. I believe God is healing you right now. I give you praise. There's somebody, your kidney, kidney. God is touching your kidneys. I give you praise, Father God. You know, if you've had witchcraft issues in your household, if you've had issues in your family where people did witchcraft over you or your parents or your entire generation, and you can see that you are never prospering, or you can see there's a block, no matter what you do, you are always having a block. I want to tell you, open up your hearts to God. Open up your hearts to God right now and pray, God, give, set my household free, set my family free, wash us in the blood of Jesus and deliver us. Father, I pray right now deliverance over that family. I pray for freedom. I command that demon of witchcraft. I command that spirit of, of witchcraft uh, to be cast out. You know, there's a family that was involved in, in, uh, in, uh, in fortune telling or in palmistry, or in numerology, or zodiac signs, or you have even visited maybe somebody who's involved in these things. I want to tell you, I believe right now God wants to deliver you. Holy Spirit, just break that yoke over them. Break that curse. Break that curse. I release I release you in the name of Jesus. I speak freedom over you. Be free in Jesus' name. Free in Jesus' name. There's somebody else, I see you having a neck issue, pain in the neck, and I believe God is touching you right now. Holy Spirit, I pray, touch, touch, touch those families. Touch that family, touch that household. Break that yoke, 
break that bondage release them father god i pray father right now touch touch your people touch your people father god for those who are watching right now and those who are going to be watching put your prayer request put your prayer request right now so that we can pray for you so that the team can pray for you so that all those who watch join us in prayer for one another holy spirit i just pray for every prayer need every prayer request that has been put on that screen i pray right now holy spirit touch them father hear that prayer hear that woman's cry that person who's feeling lost who's feeling broken who's feeling directionless who's feeling hopeless i pray holy spirit touch that touch that sister touch that brother who's going through failure who's going through disappointment who's going through discouragement touch that brother god right now i pray father for that for that for that lady who's who's lying on bed i pray holy spirit touch her and heal her Oh, I'm a shandara. I have to say that that person who is waiting for a job, I pray, Father, release your anointing, release that job over his life. Okay, yara, I'm a shandole, I'm a shdole. I pray for financial breakthrough for those who are going through lack, for those who are going through lack. I pray right now, Father, open up, open up the doors over them, cross for them, Father. I give you all the praise, Father. I give you all the praise. I give you all the praise. I thank you for this time, God. I thank you that you are a God who hears us, and that whenever we come to you, you do amazing things over our lives. We give you all the praise, glory, and honor, Father God. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. 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 If you're blessed, you need to tell us. You need to share your testimony with us. You need to text us. You need to message us so that we know that you are blessed. and that your blessing would become a testimony for others to to pursue in God if you are a first time viewer we encourage you don't forget to subscribe to the channel and the bell icon so that you are updated with all the teachings do you know that the word of god is is what sustains us is what encourages us is what gives us direction is what speaks over our lives god speaking over our lives to bring about direction to bring about freedom to understand heaven heavenly truth oh i tell you we need to grow in the word subscribe to the channel and for those who are partners with awake ministries god bless you you have been an amazing blessing for us to continue the work of god for those who want to give today there's a details on the screen all you need to do is hear from heaven ask god god should you should should i so should i let go of a seed and if the lord leads you into it do it and you will see how you will be blessed so till we meet you again stay safe stay blessed and don't forget be a blessing bye bye